Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain International. I'm Sarah Lebrek. Under the patronage of the representative of His Majesty the King for Humanitarian Work and Youth Affairs and Honorary President of the Bahrain Royal Equestrian and Endurance Race Federation Brief, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, the compositions of His Highness's Championship for Endurance Races began organized by Brief at Bahrain International Endurance Village with the largest participation in the current season 2020-2021. On the occasion, His Highness Sheikh Nasser expressed his pleasure in the large participation in the championship, which affirms the high interest in endurance championships and reflects positively on the development of the sport that receives the support of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa. His Highness noted that the stables and riders preparations for the races will have a positive impact on the championship by highlighting Bahrain's level in the endurance sport. He affirmed his keenness on supporting stables and riders by increasing prizes and rewards in the current championship in appreciation for the stables vital role. His Highness Sheikh Nasser asserted his keenness on continuing to encourage younger generations to participate in the endurance sport by implementing the plan of Brief, brief led by His Highness Sheikh Isa bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, which aims to produce an excellent new generation of riders. The Minister of Foreign Affairs and the Chairman of the GCC's Ministerial Council, Abdul Latif Zayani, headed the 147th meeting in Saudi Arabia today. The meeting was attended by their highnesses, the foreign ministers of the GCC countries, along with the Secretary General of the GCC, Dr. Naif Al Hadraf. The Council discussed a number of reports that are related to Al Ula Summit, along with various reports of the latest regional and global developments. The Speaker of the Representatives Council, Fouzia Zainal, met remotely with the President of the Italian Chamber of Deputies, Robert Fico. During the meeting, Zainal affirmed the Kingdom's keenness under the leadership of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa to bolster cooperation in various developmental and vital fields with the Friendly Republic of Italy. She also praised the deep-rooted bilateral relations and the result of the visit of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, to Italy to bolster economic and investment cooperation, signed a number of agreements and opened the embassy of Bahrain in Rome. Zainal noted that the kingdom, based on the vision of His Majesty, has promoted the values and principles of peace, coexistence, tolerance and pluralism. It has also launched a number of leading civilizational initiatives, including the launch of the King Hamad Share for Interfaith Dialogue and Peaceful Coexistence in the Italian University of Sapienza. Zainal affirmed that the Representatives Council and the Italian Chamber of Deputies continue to strengthen joint relations in all fields to serve the common interests of the two sides and bolster cooperation, particularly in the parliamentary and human rights field. For his part, the President of the Italian Chamber of Deputies expressed thanks and appreciation for the support of both leaderships for the Bahraini-Italian relations. He wished the Kingdom further progress and prosperity and praised its efforts in combating the coronavirus. He also commended the role of the Bahraini Representatives Council in promoting parliamentary diplomacy. The Minister of Labor and Social Development and the Chairman of the Labor Market Regulatory Authority, Jamil Ahmedan, presented the achievements of the National Employment Program, NEP, through the National Communications Center, which was launched last January and is set to carry through until 2023. Hamidan announced the employment of 5,000 citizens across the private sector through the launch of the second edition of the NEP, as per the directives of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa. The minister 
also announced the training of 1,874 Bahrainis in professional courses in an effort to prepare them for the labor market. He added that the program comes as a part of the responses to the pandemic and its effect on the labor market to ensure the job security of Bahrainis further develop their skills, keep unemployment stable and attract further foreign investment. The minister said that the NEP plans to employ 25,000 Bahrainis in this year to create 10,000 jobs annually through three measures. Establishing a 120 million dinar budget for Temkin, increasing the number of registered applicants and extending the period through which jobs are available. He also added other measures are being carried out such as raising awareness of the NEP among job seekers and facilitating their employment process. In another achievement for Bahrain, the president of the Sustainable Energy Authority, Dr. Abdel Hussein bin Ali Mirza, is the first Bahraini and second in the Arabian Gulf to receive an inclusive honorary membership in the Energy Institute in appreciation of his outstanding contributions to the field of sustainable energy. For more about that, we are joined by the president of the Sustainable Energy Authority. Dr. Abdel Hussein Mirza, thank you very much for being with us and congratulations on such an honorable recognition. Can you tell us more about how this further builds on the advancement of sustainable energy sector in Bahrain? Uh, thank you very much, uh, Shera, for your congratulations and for hosting me. Uh, to begin with, uh, I like to express my utmost thanks and appreciation to His Majesty the King and His Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister for their continuous support and guidance, without which I would not have received this recognition. I'm deeply honored to have been elected to the Honorary Fellowship of the Energy Institute. Energy Institute is a very prestigious non-for-profit organization which is located in London and is famous worldwide. It has over 20,000 members all over the world, but rarely they bestow honorary fellowship on individuals. To be elected for this, they very closely uh, monitor the activities of the top leaders in the energy industry and with their, uh, their credentials and achievements over a very long period of time and elect the one they consider is the best. So this is really a very prestigious uh, recognition. And uh, it's not only recognition for me as an individual, but I consider it a recognition for the Kingdom of Bahrain on what Bahrain has achieved in the field of sustainability. And this recognition will act as a propeller for us to do further to build on the advancement of sustainable energy in Bahrain. And I really thank you once again for hosting me. Thank you very much, Dr. Abdel Hussain. As always, it's an honor to have you. The Sustainable Energy Authority President, Dr. Abdel Hussain Ali Mirza, thank you for being with us. The Minister of Industry, Trade and Tourism, Zayed Al Zayani, announced that the Ministry's Inspection and Meteorology Department has received a number of requests for registration and conformity of electric vehicle models for the year 2020 and beyond, starting from January 1st where these requests were transferred to the Gulf Standardization Organization with the aim of reviewing technical reports and issuing certificates. The minister revealed that the ministerial decision regarding the adoption of the technical regulations for electric vehicles issued on January 28th will enter into force six months after its publication in the official Gazette. That is on the 29th of next July. To speak more about that, we are joined on the phone by the Director of Testing and Meteorology Sayyid Ali Ishbar. Welcome to the news. Sir, first off, what are the arrangements made by the Testing and Meteorology Directorate to ensure the activation of the regulating pr program on electrical vehicles for commercial purpose in the Kingdom of Bahrain? Uh, I would like to thank you, for, first of all, for hosting uh, me in the in, in your program to give the public an update about the technical regulation of electrical cars. 
Uh, sure, Testing and Metrology Directorate has made a series of arrangements to activate the ministerial order on the adoption of electrical car vehicles in Bahrain for commercial purposes, where the arrangement began at the Gulf level as an initiative among the GCC countries to regulate the control of electric vehicles since 2015. After the widespread use of electric, of electric vehicles around the world over the last 10 years, in coordination and cooperation with the Gulf Standardization Organization, in preparation of a unified Gulf technical regulation that includes a set of technical standards and technical requirements related to electrical vehicles intended to the Gulf single market, after which were studied and approved uh, nationally by the members of the local committee represented by the Traffic Department, uh, Customs Affairs, Ministry of Transportation and Communication, as well as the Supreme Council of Environment. Absolutely. Well, what are the requirements for the ministerial order on the adoption of the technical regulation of electrical vehicles? Uh, the technical regulation of electrical vehicles issued by the ministerial order includes a set of technical requirements that oblige economical uh, players act, uh, or uh, actors uh, like factories, agencies, suppliers, traders to complete all stages from the manufacturing stage to the stage of the trading in the Gulf market or where all of these technical requirements are international technical requirements issued by the International, uh, international Standardization Organization, the ISO, and the International Electromagnetic Commission, IEC, uh, both are the most important entities concerned with the technical requirements of these type of products, which has been adjusted in, in according uh, to the common Gulf condition and practices. Right. Yeah. Sir, when it comes to awareness, it's a very important part of um, any kind of new system coming on. Has the testing and metrology directorate conducted any awareness campaigns directing manufacturers or even importers of electrical vehicles to meet the relevant ministerial order requirements before importing to the local market? Yes, sure. Trading and Metrology Directorate in the Ministry of Industry and Commerce conducted a package of awareness campaigns prior to the ministerial order, and it continues to implement it for government and private entities as well as for citizens and residents in the Kingdom of Bahrain to leave a profound and extended impact over time to promote the use of electrical vehicles by citizens and residents to rationalize energy consumption and to reduce the carbon footprint, the carbon emission in order to preserve natural resources, uh, the environment, and meet the safety and efficiency requirements by factories to avoid rejecting customs shipments on the Bahrain border and to reduce the importer in court huge financial losses during the re-export to the country of origin as well as educate the traders and importers about the importance of providing technical files and documents to avoid the disruption of custom shipment at Bahrain borders. Uh, the Ministry of Industry, Commerce and Tourism wish to confirm that it meets the national directives to develop the integrated strategy and adopt and integrate sustainable mobility solutions and technologies in the Kingdom of Bahrain as the Ministry works in cooperation, in cooperation and coordination with the Sustainable Energy Authority to develop strategies with an integrated and comprehensive perspective to sustain the transition from traditional vehicles to high efficiency and environmentally friendly vehicles. And the Ministry seeks through that National Energy Efficiency Plan adopted by the Cabinet and set a clear initiative and objective to increase energy efficiency by rationalizing energy consumption by 6% and raising the reliance on renew renewable energy to 5% and, to 5 and raise it to 10% in 2035, yes. hopefully. That's great. We hope so as well. Thank you very much for being with us and answering our questions. That was the Director of Testing and uh, Metrology, Sayyid Ali. Shubbar, thank you for joining us. The national vaccination campaign continues to witness a wide turnout of citizens and residents. The Ministry of Health announced that 361,241 had taken the first dose of the vaccine, while 219,298 had taken the second. The ministry renewed its call for the community to commit to all precautionary measures and take the initiative to register for the coronavirus vaccination. 
The Ministry of Health has said today that the number of coronavirus cases reached 6,377 with 680 recoveries and 686 registered new cases and two deaths. 281 of the new registered cases are expatriates, 385 are contacts of active cases and 20 are travel related. The deceased were male expatriates aged 65 and 40. The ministry expresses its heartfelt condolences to the families of the deceased and urges everyone to comply with the guidelines issued by the National Task Force for Combating the Coronavirus. And on that matter, we are joined by family physician, Dr. Fatima Al-Alawi. Hello, Dr. Fatima. Welcome to the news. Can you please tell us about the importance of receiving the COVID-19 vaccine and how it contributes to ensuring the safety of the individual and the entire society? Hello, good evening. Um, uh, first of all, the importance of uh, vaccination against COVID-19 virus comes out from the huge burden of COVID-19 disease itself on healthcare system, on person and community level. Um, we have witnessed within the past year and until today how the virus is easily and quickly transmitted from person to person and uh, giving symptoms uh, that range from mild to severe and uh, unfortunately ICU admissions and deaths. So by vaccination, which is the safest and uh, a very well-known methodology of acquiring immunity and disease prevention uh, together with the uh, following the precautionary and safety measurements like social distancing, face mask, and hand hygiene, uh, all can lead to disease prevention. And if it did happen, uh, the symptoms will be very mild in contrast to those who were non-vaccinated. Um, since the beginning of uh, the national vaccination campaign, uh, Kingdom of Bahrain has provided many different vaccines that are all approved by NHRA and that are all safe and provided for free. So by vaccination and uh, following the precautionary measurements, of course, we are going to have uh, less uh, disease and more disease prevention and we are going to uh, protect ourselves, protect our community and our surroundings, of course, especially our beloved children. Absolutely. Thank you very much for your time. And that was family physician, Dr. Fatma Lalawi.